I'm gonna do a review on collectible drinking glasses from the 70s, 80s, and 90s. I know that's a really weird thing to review, but oh well. I have a whole box full of them, so I might as well review them. The first one is Ronald McDonald. And they all have a little scene on them, and this one scene shows Ronald leapfrogging over a fry guy. Which seems a little bit strange because Ronald McDonald probably outweighs the fry guy by about 200 pounds. So when he pushed down on the fry guy to leap over him, he probably would have killed him. And then on the other side, we have these two children who are also leapfrogging over a fry guy. Why has everyone in McDonaldland got a torch of the fry guys? I mean, I know they steal French fries, but the hamburger steals hamburgers and no one's leapfrogging over him. On the other side, it says, no swimming, filet fish lake which is kind of funny because Ronald is about to land in filet fish Lake, which would probably count as swimming. So not only does he bully fry guys, but he also breaks the law. The next one features Ronald's goofy friend Grimace, and he's on a pogo stick. And then we got the fry guys again, and they're wearing spring shoes. And then the kids are holding up a finish line. So I guess this is some sort of jumping race. And I just noticed that it says McDonald Land Action Series. So that would explain Ronald leapfrogging and now we got Grimace participating in some sort of jumping race. So I guess the theme is supposed to be action, but I still think it's a strange choice to put this big fat purple blob on a pogo stick and fry guys wearing spring shoes. Next up we have the Hamburglar, and he seems to be in this little jail cell on a train, but the disturbing part is these kids are back, and this time they're driving the train. So somebody in McDonald land thought it would be a good idea for these children to not only transport a fugitive, but to also drive this locomotive. The people of McDonald's land really got to get their priorities straight. I like how the smoke from the locomotive looks like hamburgers. <laughs> and the fry guys are on the front of the train and they're for once not getting tortured. Then again, they are inches away from falling off the train and getting run over. The next one is my favorite character, Captain Crook. If you don't remember who that is, it's because this character got discontinued in the 80s. I guess they thought he frightened children they also didn't want to have two characters that stole things because much like the Hamburglar who stole hamburgers, Captain Crook stole filet fish So I guess they thought two characters that were thieves was a bad influence on children. So Captain Crook got the boot. What I don't get about this scene is that he seems to be pulling the plug on his own boat, thus making him drown. And then the spray from the leak is going all over these children and they seem to be enjoying it, which is just a completely bizarre scene. And there's a filet fish and Captain Crook's totally ignoring it because he's too busy sinking his own boat. So I have no idea what's going on in this one. The next one is another forgotten character that was discontinued and it's Officer Big Mac. I don't know why they discontinued this one, because McDonald Land seems to need an authoritative figure. If they're going to be torturing fry guys and stealing filet fish and hamburgers, this guy's pretty important. But according to this glass, he's kind of an incompetent police officer, because rather than go after Captain Crook and the Hamburglar and focus on those kids driving a train, um, he seems to be chasing after these kids who are on a scooter, a pogo stick, and a tricycle. And not to mention this kid looks way too old to be riding a tricycle. But he's chasing after them because it looks like they are violating the speed limit. So by all means, Officer Big Mac, waste all your time chasing after kids on tricycles and scooters. And forget about all the other crap going on in McDonald Land. And for some bizarre reason, he's on roller skates. 
He's obviously going to go more than two miles an hour on those roller skates, so he's breaking his own rule. I guess that's why they got rid of Officer Big Mac, because he was totally incompetent. Last but not least, we have Mayor McCheese. He was one of my favorites, too, because he was kind of a bumbling fool, which made him a little bit funny. I thought his mouth was weird. It's supposed to be a hamburger, but it looks like he's got a mouthful of hay. So Mayor McCheese is taking a photograph with an old-timey camera, and he's taking a picture of these kids again. But the one thing I thought was weird is that there are two boys and a girl, and the girl is on the bottom. You'd think they'd put the two boys on the bottom and the girl would be on top. That's just my opinion. And then we got a fry guy unrealistically balancing on this kid's arm. So once again, they, they like to put the fry guys in weird situations. So that's all I have to say about Mayor McCheese. And that's the last of the McDonaldland glasses. The next one is from the Muppets collection that McDonald's gave out in 1981. Here's the first one, and it shows Miss Piggy crashing through a stained glass window, and my sister had this exact picture on a poster that was also given out by McDonald's. The other side is kind of weird because it's got the rest of the characters down here, but then it has this really weird blank space right there that looks like it should have something on it, but it doesn't, so it's kind of strange. The next one is one of my favorite glasses in all my collection, and it's also from The Great Muppet Caper, and here it is. It features the Muppets on the Happiness Hotel, which was their tour bus in the movie. It's got all the characters on it. My favorite part of this glass was that it has Dr. Teeth on it right there, because at the time he was my favorite Muppet. The next one actually came from a thrift store, and my friend Shauna came running up to me like, oh my god, you're totally gonna love me. And I'm like, why? And she goes, this is why. She had found this awesome Pac-Man glass, and it was like two bucks, so of course I bought it, because not only do I collect glasses, but I also collect Pac-Man stuff. So this is actually displayed on my Pac-Man shelf, but I also drink out of it because I love it. Then I have this Pac-Man glass that I actually got in the 80s and I always thought it was weird that it has so many ghosts on it like it's got the Pac-Man maze but it's filled with ghosts there's no Pac-Man inside the maze Pac-Man's up here but I can never drink out of this again because it has a huge crack in it I don't know if you can see it but it's a huge crack and it goes all the way down there it is you can see it right there so it goes all the way down the glass but I think the paint from that is actually holding it together. So I can't drink out of it, but I have it displayed on my Pac-Man shelf. The next one is from the Garfield collection, also from McDonald's, and here's the first one. And the funny thing about this glass is that I got it when I was grounded. For some reason, my mother grounded me, I don't remember why, and on the way home, we stopped at McDonald's, and I was like, can I get one of the Garfield glasses? And she was like, okay, so I got this one. And I remember thinking, wow, I just got grounded and my mother bought me this cool glass. It says, I'm easy to get along with when things go my way. Then it's got Odie blowing on the canoe. The next one is Garfield saying, I'd like mornings better if they started later. No offense, but Garfield is really corny. Like. Nobody would think this is funny now. Then it says, whoever invented evenings probably invented teddy bears too. And he's holding Pookie, his teddy bear. And I can't believe I just remembered the name of Garfield's teddy bear. Next up is the Flintstones collection from 1993 when the movie came out. And these were from McDonald's too. And I'll just try to blow through these really fast. First up is this one. And it's got a bone for the handle and the glass itself is like a one big collection of fossils. I don't know if you can see that, and I don't know if you can see this, but it actually says Flintstones and then Rock Donalds. A little pun there. After that, next we have this one. It's got a saber tooth 
for the handle and I'd always hold it like that and I'd put my thumb there I don't know why um, that says Rock Donald's as well and this one looks like wood it's kind of got a wood texture to it and finally this one which has rocks for the handle and the glass is actually rocks I didn't get the fourth one in the collection I don't know why I remember I bought these myself and they were like two bucks and I was in high school and all my friends thought I was like rich because I could afford to get the glass at McDonald's I guess two bucks was expensive back then okay next I have the Lord of the Rings light up goblets which are actually from 2001 but I'm not gonna spend too much time explaining them I'm just gonna blow through all four of them because I actually have the whole collection and the boxes they came in so here we go this is Strider this is Frodo Gandalf and Arwen I will show you how they light up though so they've got this base right here and it looks really gross because it's yellow but it comes off so you can wash the glass without washing the electrical part but because you can't wash this it got yellow but so you turn it on and it glows red pretty cool I used to drink wine out of these I forgot to mention that these are actually from Burger King and not McDonald's like everything else. So yeah, Burger King did give out cool collectible glasses. The last five are actually plastic cups and not glasses, but whatever. Okay, the first one is quite possibly the coolest cup I have in this entire collection. It's a Fonzie cup. I find it hysterical that my mother actually bought this for my sister when she was about five because my sister loved the fawns. Sometimes when I have people over, I just like to casually drink out of this and be like, oh, this? Yeah, this is totally a Fonzie cup. I'm just that cool. Next, I have another cup that came from Burger King, and this one makes a lot of people jealous, and I've had people want to buy it off of me, but... Even though I'm not a big Star Wars fan, I like Star Wars, but I don't love it. I'm still never getting rid of this. It's a Return of the Jedi cup from Burger King. And it's got Han Solo on it. And I don't even remember that scene in the movie, but I always thought that was creepy. But yeah, Return of the Jedi. Next. And this is not mine, this was not my cup, but I have it now for the nostalgia value is strawberry shortcake. And it's easy to name all the characters, but I can name their pets. So we got strawberry shortcake and her cat custard, apple dumpling, and I think that's tea time turtle. But I don't remember the turtle belonging to Apple Dumpling. Then there's Huckleberry Pie and Pup Cake. But we used to call him Huckleberry Hound. Yeah. And whenever I'd play Strawberry Shortcakes with my sister or the neighborhood kids, I would be this guy because he was the only boy. And then there's Blueberry Muffin. And she has a mouse named Cheesecake, but he's not there. Next is a very odd cup. It's a Campbell's Soup Kid cup. I think it came with a package of Campbell's Soup. And me and my sister used to fight over who got to drink out of this one, which is odd because it's totally creepy. But yeah, you pretty much drink out of her brain. Or his. I don't know if that's a boy or a girl. I think it's a girl whatever it's creepy and finally we have the last one and if you made it through this entire video I applaud you but it's one of my favorite cartoon characters of all time on one of my favorite cartoons of all time it's an Animaniacs cup featuring Wacko Warner 
Wacko was my absolute favorite cartoon character in the 90s. And my friend Kathy got me this cup for my birthday. And along with it, even though this is not a cup, I got an, a Wacko stuffed animal. So I got these two together because I was obsessed with the Animaniacs and Wacko Warner. Okay, that's it for this review on collectible glasses from the 70s, 80s, 90s, and 2001. If you liked this video, that's awesome. And if you hated it, I don't know how you're even watching this part because you would have shut the video off about 30 seconds in. So if you hated it and you're watching this, then you really didn't hate it that much. Be sure to leave hate comments if it sucked, because it probably did. But oh well, that was my collection of collectible glasses. I had to just I had to show people because they're so cool. Bye.